Hey guys, it's Bear here with Journey of Preparedness, helping you prepare not only for your doomsday, but your everyday. Uh, you've seen in our previous video that we had got some uh, little quail chicks. Uh, we are starting to raise quail, and right now they're they're doing awesome. Uh, they're right over there. I'll give you a little uh, update on them and show you them here at the end of the video. But uh, they're in their brooder now, but they won't be in there for a week, for very long. Uh, maybe another week, week and a half or so. With that being said, I do have their permanent cage already built and set up, but I do need still to handle their food and water situation. Well, I don't want to have to constantly change out their water and clean their water and have them risk getting sick by having drinking contaminated water that hasn't been cleaned out. You know, those little uh, waterers that I'm, I'm currently using, uh, if you've seen you know, they, they're great now for babies and it's easy to clean out, but when they get older and, and you know, they get bigger, they're going to need more water and I don't want to have to constantly be changing it out or refilling it. And, you know, if we go away for say a weekend, you know, little camping trip or something, I don't want to have to worry about them being able to get clean, fresh water. So we are going to be building today an automatic watering system. We will be using this. Uh, this is actually a four gallon food safe bug bu bucket. Uh, I liked the square one as opposed to the round. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference. I thought it would seal better with the bulkhead fitting. Uh, that's this guy here. So that's why I went with the square. I just thought it would, it would seat better against the plastic and not have to run into any leaking issues. Um, I do have two feet of space inside the cage where we're going to be running. Basically, this will run to some hose here, and that hose will run to PVC pipe, which will house these little cups. And basically what happens is they peck at this, it releases water into the cup, and then they can drink the water. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy. It keeps a little bit of water in here, uh, but nothing that they're really going to get dirty or that's gonna go bad and, and get nasty on them. And then they'll always have fresh water. I'll also run a uh, piece of, I'll, I'll show you that, I guess. I'll run a piece of hose up so you, I can see the water level without having to look in the bucket all the time. Cause it's actually gonna be up high. It'll be gravity fed uh, right into their cage. So I'll show you that when we get to that point, but um, just wanted to give you an uh, outline of what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get right into it after we get a drink of coffee. All right, so first we've got to install the bulkhead. And what I'm going to do is drill a hole a few inches up and that's where the bulkhead will go. And the reason for that is you want to keep a little bit down here just for in case there's any dirt or any debris or anything like that gets in there, you want it to settle at the bottom. You don't want to get into your hose and into your pipe or clogging up your, your little watering cups. So you want to leave a couple inches. It doesn't have to be, you know, real. This isn't doesn't have to be real specific. Uh, it's pretty general, pretty easy to put together. Anybody can do it. So don't beat yourself up on exact location or you know anything like that. I'm just gonna go up a little bit. Start slow here. Get the drill in there. Come on. A lot, more, a lot more effort than I thought it would, huh? And... Maybe I shouldn't use such an old bit, huh? Jeepers. This is a little tight here, um, but we're just going to screw it in and use a little force. It is going to work. in there there we go so then you want to make sure that your gasket here is on the uh, inside on the wet side and remember with these bulkhead fittings they are reverse thread so when you're screwing them in remember that you got to go the opposite way you can see that real well in there in the camera but the opposite way of what you would normally think of and then um, just get, make sure you get it nice and tight, tighten down, and that'll keep a uh, good seal there. Oops, going the wrong way there. Get 
this a little tighter in here. There we go. And that should be good there. And that, like I said, that gasket will get a nice, good seal on the inside there for that. And that part is done. Now you got your opening. So what I'm going to do then is take this, if I can get this uh, sticker off here, I apologize, probably should have done that before I started the video, take off these barcodes, clean that up. Um, hold on one sec, we'll, we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll come back. Alright, so got our hose clamp, got our hose, what we're going to do is basically shove the hose down on there, tighten up that hose clamp here. in there just because I don't know you should uh, cut this off here get another hose clamp here put it on there stick that down in there like I said I really want to try to do this without all these connections but <laughs> It just isn't going to work out that way. I could not find a threaded connection on a T with uh, with one side threaded and one side not. And, you know, in my hardware store I couldn't find that, so I just went with this T connection here on the hose and uh, So basically a uh, piece of hose will come off the top of this and just I'll attach it here just tape it or something to, the, to, to that there so that way we can see our water level coming out of there. Then what we'll have is a large piece of hose coming off of here which will feed down to our PVC pipe. So we will set this aside for now and we'll begin to work on our PVC. So what I'm currently thinking is that I will run this outside the cage, having this on there, and this is where I'll start, but I really want to have a shut off there just in case something goes wrong, I get a leak, I got to clean out the system, you know, anything like that. I really want this inside of here. So I will start with that. Uh, one thing that's really nice to have is these uh, these PVC pipe cutters. Uh, this one I think I got at Harbor Freight or something like that. They're really cheap. Uh, they work really good for you know if you're talking you know up to like inch pipe or something like that. Uh, they work awesome, as you can see here. They're just a little ratchet. Hold the pipe in there. Cut this piece. There we go, that's simple. So I think I'll stick that inside there, this one in here, and then we'll have another piece coming off here and there's gonna be a lot of little connections just cause I gotta go from piece to piece to piece, um, <laughs> you know, to have these cups in there, but that's uh, what I gotta do. I think I'll go with, um, let's see here, how big is this? So we've got seven inches. That seven inches leaves us with 21 inches left. These are two a piece. Two, four, six, eight, ten inches. So it leaves me only 11 inches in between. Yeah, that should work. I think I should be able to go with two inch pieces here. Ah, oh, no. I'm going to cut that down. I'm going to go with three inches. So I'm going to go with three inch pieces and cut those and then uh, we'll see how far we get here. Just kind of doing this on the fly a little bit. Um, again, it's not, uh, 
doesn't have to be perfect. I got enough PVC pipe here where I can make some adjustments as needed. And basically this is going to run from there to there. I'm not going to glue them. Uh, there shouldn't, there's not going to be pressure. It's just going to be gravity fed. So I shouldn't need, um, glue or anything like that to worry about leaking. If I do have to come back with these threads and, uh, you know, thread it, uh, put some, you know, pipe tape on there, some plumber's tape, then I'll do that. But I don't think I'll have to, um, but I will, uh, get these connected and, and show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, so now that I got these all together, uh, you can see this is exactly what it's gonna look like. So I think what I'm going to do is have this pipe run on the outside of the hardware cloth and then feed these through, hopefully through the hardware cloth. So just these will be sticking inside of the, uh, inside of the cage. I'll show you that once we get it all set up and, and ready to go. Um, these here, these are the T fittings here. But these cups are screwed into so they are two separate items i forgot to mention that earlier uh the cup and the tea fittings i'll leave a link below in the description uh where you can get these on amazon they do come with a little rubber washer so you shouldn't need to uh again put any tape on those um, they do just screw in real nice they're actually made perfect for each other perfect size so like i said i'll leave a, a link for those below for both of these, um, you have PVC pipe. I just got at the local, uh, for us it's Menards, but any, any of your hardware stores will have PVC pipe. That's real easy. Same with these fittings. I can leave a link below for them, um, but ultimately it's, it's probably cheaper just for you to go get them at uh, your hardware store. I'll leave a link for the bulkhead fitting. Uh, I'll leave a link for a set of these if you want, but again, I Harbor Freight is fine. You know, don't need anything too expensive. Um, so this is what it'll look like. This will be sitting on top of the cage and then the hose will run down to this inside of the cage and it'll just be gravity fed like this. So I will get this put together. Uh, make sure, one thing to make sure, make sure you check for leaks before you go ahead and have everything set in place because it would really suck if it was leaking somewhere and you had it full of water inside the cage, attached to the cage, inside, you know, and then uh, found out you got to deal with leaks then. So make sure you test it before you set it up. Don't make that mistake. Uh, you don't want to be uh, dealing with cleaning up, you know, four gallons of water or five gallons of water. If you use a round bucket, it's fine. Um, but you don't want to be dealing with that water issue after you've got it set up. So make sure you go ahead and check for leaks beforehand. And if you need to add any tape or tighten them up, do that right away before you get it all set up in the cage. All right, so I'm gonna finish putting this together. I'm gonna hook it up in the cage and then I'll show you exactly what it's gonna look like when it's all done, all right? All right guys, so here is the watering system all hooked up inside the, the cage coop area. Uh, I decided to actually run it on the inside uh, just to make it a little easier on myself than trying to feed these through and cut a whole bunch of different holes. I only had to cut one through the through the uh, hardware cloth there. Uh, so as you can see, here it is all set up. I just zip tied it right here. Zip ties running down here. Cups here for the water. Shut off valve here. Uh, here you can see I, this is the only hole I had to cut through the hardware cloth. I got the hose running through there. I zip tied it on the side here. Uh, and then it runs up here. And then it runs to the bucket. And then I got the hose coming up here, which I still need to attach, but we'll get that attached. And there's the bucket there. Um, give you a little, uh, I'll back up here and give you a little uh, preview of what the, uh, what their cage is gonna look like here. So this is what the cage looks like here. Uh, we got a closed off side and we've got an open side. Uh, reason for that is in the summertime and stuff, this can be moved, this whole system can be moved outside and that way they have somewhere to get out of the wind or, or rain or anything like that and then they've got an open area so they can uh, regulate themselves. Uh, this side here, 
again is completely open uh, the hardware cloth here and the nice thing about this is that there will be pans underneath here so that their droppings will drop down underneath so I don't have to come in here and, and clean it out every day and I can just drop those pans and uh, clean it out that way up top here this is a clear you can't see my fingers sorry clear plastic roof here and that's great because then obviously they get light through but it also allows me like in the winter time here to put a light inside of here and then they get their 14 hours of light which will keep them producing eggs uh, on the other side here this closed enclosed area all the sides are enclosed uh, i got a solid rope up on there here this is going to be where their dust bath will be a little sandbox for them and that way they can also get off of the hardware cloth if their you know feet are starting to hurt them bother them or anything they can get up in here and this will be like i said this will be all be full of sand so they can give themselves a dust bath there's a little walk right through here again this is closed off a little hole in the top for ventilation but other than that it's completely closed off minus this little part here but it'll be a good uh, wind block for them and uh, then they can uh, Up. then they can just get in there and that wood will be gone off the top of there and stuff and these right there those are the trays that'll go underneath uh, they're just like uh, oil drip pans I can leave a link to those uh, below in the description but they're just uh, large thin oil drip pans uh, and they'll work great for catching everything underneath but uh, hinges are different because that's just happened to be what I have on hand uh, I had some extras from when I built other stuff so I just use those instead of going out and buying them. Use what you got, right? Try to save yourself some money. Um, again, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. If you want to keep up on the notifications so you get updates on how the quail are doing, make sure you smash that bell. Uh, if you want any of the gear that we have, uh, go to the Teespring store. Hold on, let me get you turned around here. All right, if you like this shirt I'm wearing, you know, or you, we got hoodies and we got stickers, we got mugs, we got uh, you name it, we got it. Go ahead and check out the Teespring store and get your JTP gear there. Um, if you again, if you liked what we did today here with the uh, with the coop setup for the quail, and you want to continue to see our quail grow and, and watch what we're doing here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, smash that bell so you get notifications every time we put up a new video, and you can stay current with uh, what we got going on here at the house. All right, till next time. This has been Bear with Georgia Preparedness. Helping you prepare not only for your doomsday, but your everyday. All right, Peace. guys. So, uh, promise you, I'd give you a little quail update. And so, here they are. You can see I actually have the heat lamp off. Uh, they're here in the sunroom. And the great thing about the sunroom, excuse my finger there, the great thing about the sunroom is the fact that it does heat up during the day and they get plenty of natural light. And as you can see, they are happy as can be running around getting bigger. Uh, again, about another week and they will be out of here and into their uh, normal cage and then uh, a few more weeks and they'll be ready to go start laying eggs and uh, a couple weeks after that ready for uh, freezer camp the ones that don't make it so just wanted to give you a little update here they are cute little guys just eating away and drinking away and hanging out and being happy